This next question comes from Jeremy. Jazz Twitter is in heat for Anthony Black. That sounds sensual. That's cool. Uh, Anthony Black, uh, Kaysen Wallace, and Taylor Hendricks. Also, I see a lot of hate for Grady Dick going to the Jazz. Can you give a pros, cons for him lining up next to Lowry and Kessler? Also, hypothetically, do this exercise with Luca there via trade. What I'm sorry, what are you giving up for Luca that you get to keep Lowry Marketing and Walker Kessler? So Akbaji, you don't even need to worry about salary matching, but other contracts, and then like eight first round picks at that point, because you're gonna have Luca, your own first round picks are gonna be too good. At that point, you need to dip in and like Dallas has to value Cleveland's draft. It has to value Minnesota's draft. I guess that's not a terrible way to go. So it, imagining the fit, yeah, it would be super fun. I mean, Larry Markin's a pure play finisher. Walker Kessler works well off Luka Doncic. I shouldn't say Larry's a pure play finisher, but he's comfortable in that role. But then he can also do secondary stuff, and he'd be super secondary if Luka's there. Uh, would you be able to generate more off-ball movement than we've seen in Dallas um, with your personnel? I think Larry Markin would be a good start there. I just eight first round picks. Like, is that the number? Is it seven? I don't know how many first round picks you need to give up to get Luka Doncic without giving up Lowry marketing or Walker Kessler. Just that's so hard to do. Um, the first part of this, I don't know what you're necessarily asking for me from the first three. If I had to, I guess let's look at my preferences among these four. So we'll start with Grady Dick. I don't think, and I have begun my draft prep work for anyone who cares. Uh, I don't like Grady. We'll start there. Grady Dick's size and shooting is still rare. So I don't get the hate. Like you put like the jazz have fielded really spacing lineups all year. Um, you get Grady Dick who can also do the, you know, catch and drive stuff as well. I think the bigger issue, I'm sure, I don't know what jazz fans are saying, but is it because of his defensive limitations? I understand that. And from watching him, like I could see how he would really get torched in certain on ball matchups, but all the experts that I read seem to think that he'll be a good team defender. And then from what I've seen, He's fine, like guarding the corners, not losing track of those shooters, even if they're, you know, sliding up or down. And that he's pretty good at making rotations where he's, you know, the high man more than one pass away and needs to rotate lower. Uh, those things looked fine for me from him. So I think he would be a quality fit. Now, of the four, do I think he's the best fit? No. I think he might be my least favorite fit, like of the four in the Jazz, maybe. Kaysen Wallace, who I can't say his name without thinking about Kaysen Protein. Is that is that weird? Um, but I I love Wallace's defensive energy, and he's the more reliable spacer. There's just like two. I want someone bigger, like a real wing type player, not someone who's 6'4, 6'3, 6'5 on the jazz. The fact that he brings so much defensive heat that maybe helps you. So it's not, oh, look at him over overlapping with Jordan Clarkson and, and Colin Sexton if both of them are still there next season. I really, I want Anthony Black is one of my favorite prospects because he's so smart. He's just huge. And you put the ball in his hands and the decision-making um, that he's displayed. And then what he's going to be able to do defensively like this, is this someone who can guard four, five, maybe positions. I just worry about his shooting, but it's not as much of a concern on the jazz. So he's at like 30% from three last year is the 70 plus percent clip at the charity stripe enough to get you on board with this idea that he can be a better standstill shooter. I honestly don't know. I think, Hendricks might be my favorite one. And Adam Spinell and Caitlin Cooper did a great podcast for the box end one where they went into Jarris Walker and uh, Taylor Hendricks, a great deal. So everyone should go check that out the box end one. And I think spins will be coming on the podcast next week. Maybe I'll solicit uh, draft questions from our discord, join our discord um, to include in there. But is Hendricks my favorite one? Just like, would any team ever score at the rim with him and Walker Kessler in the game? I think a big, factor would be do you trust his outside shooting he was at 39 plus percent on over 4.5 attempts per game uh, i like i trust it and his free throw percentage was high enough to where you trust it um, but do you trust him to make extra decisions with the ball like this is not someone that you want to see taking multiple dribbles he's not going to continue to to move the ball he just is in general like when you look at his handle uh it's not something that he's going to bust out extensively and it's not going to look pretty and there are times where he either won't go anywhere or you just don't want to see it so I think he might be my favorite because like, do you need another, I guess if you're losing, losing Jordan Clarkson, you could make the case that you want another sort of shot creator type. So if I had to rank these, I'm going to go I'm about to hate myself. Aren't I? I'm going to go Anthony black, Taylor Hendricks, Grady Dick, case and Wallace. And I'm, I'm not sure where to land on the Dick Wallace. I could be talked into either of those guys. 
Uh, we'll see who the Jazz have. That first pick is at number. That's number nine for them. I think look, they have the juice if they wanted to. Let me bring up the let me bring up the draft order here. Should I let's should we should we throw this up on screen as well? But when we bring up the draft order. I feel like the Jazz have the ability to add another lottery pick if they wanted to. Like, what could they grease the wheels of? They're also drafting at sixteen and then twenty eight. So does sixteen and twenty eight get you? Toronto's 13 and or even Oklahoma City's 12. I don't know that Orlando would want like a, a third first round pick. They have six and 11. So that might be the cutoff. Does Dallas want to drop down from 10? But so like 10, 12, 13, like it feels like they, if you include another type of first round pick or something small, maybe even forget number 28, but if it's 16 and something to jump up like four or five spots and do you land in the territory to draft two of these guys? I think I've seen... Uh, of all of these guys, Case and Wallace feels like he might fall the the furthest. Although I should really look. I don't look at. I try not to look at too many mock drafts um, while I'm doing my drafts because those will very easily influence me. But let's bring one up. Uh, let's bring one up here. Uh, yeah, Taylor Hendricks is what I think the most popular pick for the Jazz. Black might go to the Wizards at eight. That would make a ton of sense. Yeah, Case and Wallace and Grady Dick would be like, hey, can we get the pick that oh they can acquire two of them? Um, like that would be. That would be something because I love the fits of these. But yeah, so my ranking would it would still be Anthony Black, probably because I'm higher on him as being the best player of all these guys, followed by Taylor Hendricks. Uh I'm gonna say Grady Dick than Casey Wallace. I don't feel great about that though. So I apologize if anyone's uh, offended by those picks. Mm -hmm.